Hello and welcome to The Drum. I'm Scott Bevett. Well, coming up, the private investment by Malcolm Turnbull that's put a smile on the PM's face. What does Ireland's financial bailout mean for our economy? And the MP forced to do the bolt from live TV to make a vote in Parliament. Well, on our panel tonight, New South Wales Liberal MP Prue Goward, writer and blogger Anthony Lowenstein, and in Canberra, Simon Banks from Hawker Britain. Welcome one and all. Thank you. Well, first to the continuing game of one-upmanship between the major parties on how to handle the banking sector. Opposition small business spokesman Bruce Bilson has introduced a private member's bill to crack down on price signalling, in effect, when the big banks telegraph their interest rate plans to each other. We're looking at communication with the purpose of inducing others to change the way they might price their products, uh, had that communication not been there, and we're looking for an anti-competitive effect. So that goes to the heart of the need to instil greater competition in banking and, in fact, in other areas of the economy. Treasurer Wayne Swan has ridiculed the idea as crass populism. Instead, he's pushing for non-bank lenders to be strengthened. We need a new pillar in the banking system based on the competitive power of our mutual sector, our building societies and our credit unions because, you see, the big banks are behaving badly because they believe that their customers simply won't walk down the road to get a better deal. So I'd urge uh, consumers and customers out there to have a look around. Now, the government won't reveal its banking reform package until next month. Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey says Labor's dragging its heels. He's calling for an inquiry into the entire financial system. An inquiry that will deliver the sort of framework uh, that can assist with competition, assist with stability. Most importantly, it can help to inoculate us against the sorts of future shocks that we now have to be prepared for following the global financial crisis. And I just issue a warning. Uh, when Wayne Swan talks about creating a fifth pillar, uh, he is talking about taking a baseball bat to smaller banks like Suncorp Metway, uh, such as uh, Bendigo Adelaide Banks, uh, Members Equity and so on. Because once the 800-pound gorilla, known as the federal government, gets into backing a single entity then that is going to distort competition, not enhance competition. Joe Hockey there. Prue Goward, how overdue is an inquiry into the financial system, do you believe, or is it indeed just crass populism? Well, I, I mean, look, this is an era, I mean, with a government and a parliament like this, uh, who can blame oppositions and independents for trying whatever they can? Uh, this isn't the usual rules. But uh, we haven't had an inquiry into the financial system, I don't think, for 30 years. And in that time, we've had a variety of technological changes that have changed banking, as it's changed a lot of other things, and certainly the internationalisation of the Australian economy. So I wouldn't have thought it was a bad idea in principle, and it's certainly true uh, that despite all this international competition and the internationalisation of the economy, uh, a remarkably Australia has stuck with four big banks. Uh, and uh, you know, that they would have the dominant market share, and it's just, it is an oligopoly. So, I, I mean, I don't think it would uh, hurt at all. So, you like the idea on the four big banks, the idea of a fifth pillar, as it were? Well, whether it's a fifth pillar or just other forms of banking, and uh, I mean, like the post office has had to compete over more and more of its um, monopoly products, and that's been very good for uh, customer service as well as um, customer prices. So, I can't see what would be wrong with introducing more competitors. You might find uh, certain uh, com companies that can do parts of it, and other um, companies that can do other parts of it. But uh, the more competition you have, the better. I suppose the issue with um, Mr Bilson's uh, private member's bill is that uh, this is the first time that private member's bill really have had any bills have had any sway in Australian parliaments. Usually they get relegated to non-compulsory business day and you know half the, half the parliament's not there and nobody takes much notice of them. But in this parliament they have almost the same status as a government bill and that is quite remarkable and obviously what Mr Bilson's saying is that if the signalling's occurring, once we'd have referred it to the Trade Practices Act, now it's an, an ACC, ACCC issue uh, and maybe that it does need to be taken account of because it's using modern communications technologies that, again, weren't there 30 years ago. Anthony Lowenstein, is this just crass populism? Even if it is, so what, I guess, is the mm. first point. I mean, one of the things I noticed in a, in a poll that came out in the Fairfax Press today was that Joe Hockey's calls for 
more accountability was in fact supported by the majority of voters. I think generally speaking the Howard government had 12 years to try and change this, didn't do a hell of a lot to make it fairer in many people's view. Labor's been in power for three years and have done bugger all too frankly until recently, until after the election. So I don't think people actually really care if Labor does it or the independents push it or the Liberals push it. I don't think people really, I mean they may remember when they, when they vote next month, next year, whenever they go back to the polls. But I think ultimately having more banks in a system is only a good thing. Of course the banks are going to hate it, obviously, for self-evident reasons. But I think it's a positive thing. And if it comes from hockey or Labor, who cares? Who cares? Simon Banks in Canberra. The talking of overdue, as we were about this inquiry before, Joe Hockey is uh, giving the perception of setting the pace here, and that uh, how much do you think is uh, how much is this damaging the government in the electorate's eyes? The perception that uh, Wayne Swan is simply reacting or trying to catch up. Uh, well, I think what Joe's actually asking for, and what she said today, was he just wants to have another inquiry. He wants to have another talk fest. And I think what Australians actually want is for government to get on and do something in this area. Uh, Wayne Swan has said that he's going to have a package of reforms that he's going to release uh, in the course of next month. I mean, I think we have to go back a bit and understand how this has come about. I mean, whilst I don't think anyone would have pretended that we had perfect competition in the banking sector prior to the global financial crisis, there's no doubt that the really kind of great liquidity crunch that came through the GFC really hit a lot of the second-tier players in our banking uh, you know, sector uh, back a bit. It's made it more expensive, for example, for them to raise money. And obviously, if they have to pay more money to raise money, uh, it costs more to then lend it on to other people as well. So I think really what the government is trying to have a look at is that, first of all, prior to the GFC, it introduced some reforms to make it easier for people to uh, switch uh, banking products. We've seen with the foreshadowing of reforms in terms of getting rid of exit fees, they're also making it easier for people to be able to change if they're not happy with the bank that they're, uh, that they're supporting. But I think, too, the government's actually focused on where the real competition in the banking sector comes from, which is from further liquidity, getting more money into the banking sector. And if you have more players with more money, uh, then we know that competition does flourish within the banking sector. And that's really, I think, you're going to see the priority for the government's package uh, next month. Prue Simon just used a word a moment ago, talk fest. There could be that perception, given that especially the Greens leader, Bob Brown, came out and said, look, neither side is really taking real action here against the banks. Has uh, Mr Brown got a point? Or, or is he also engaging in crass populism here, given the Greens are also pushing for uh, reigning in the banks through Parliament through, through, their own, uh, through their own motion? Look, this is a game for the fast and furious. We've never seen a federal parliament quite like this. Uh, and everybody is looking for opportunities to score off everybody else, which, of course, is why it is so inherently stable, fascinating for commentators, uh, and I think confusing for the public. Because, you know, electorates quite like things done in a steady way, and, they, and, they, and all this cross-talk is um, a terrible distraction and a confusion. But um, so Bob Brown's playing that game as well. Uh, and yes, it would be nice if the government could announce some reforms, but uh, as Anthony has said, they could have done that uh, three years ago when they got in. And uh, I think uh, it is a fair enough point to make that modern banking uh, is a very different beast to the one it was a couple of decades ago, and it wouldn't be a bad time to look at how we could improve the regulation and make it more in keeping with the technologies that it's dealing with. And there's a growing perception inside Parliament, I doubt, it doesn't matter who's doing it as long as someone's doing something against the banks. Indeed. I think that's, as I was saying before, I think that's what the general public will be saying. I mean, the poll that was in the Fairfax Press today seemed to say that people were pleased that hockey had made these suggestions. But I suspect had it been someone from the Labor Party, they would have been equally happy as well. I mean, ultimately, people are struggling. I mean, you know, one looks at real wages have not gone up for a very, very long time. That's what matters to people. So ultimately, if Labor's going to do something great and if it's someone else, frankly, fine. But at least someone does something. And I'm not to simply say, as Wayne Swan did today, you know, we're introducing these wonderful reforms next month. Let's see what they are. What I was going to say, <laughs> the, the proof will be in the, in yeah. the eating. Words are cheap. Yeah, with, <laughs> yes, for everybody, words are cheap, Indeed. but not for governments. Well, there's a whole yeah. nation waiting to eat, I suspect. <laughs> Let's Just move... before Christmas. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Let's move on to another issue that's uh, big in Canberra and beyond at the moment, the National Broadband Network. Uh, now, it's a step closer after Labor secured the support of the Greens in exchange for agreeing to a parliamentary vote on any future privatisation. But the government still needs to get independent Senator Nick Xenophon on board, and he's not too happy after being asked to sign a gag order to see the NBN business case. 
confidential briefing initially, there was going to be a, a gag order, if you like, uh, for seven years, and it was changed to three years. And I understand now the government is looking at two or three weeks, but two or three weeks may as well be two or three decades, because by that stage, the vote will be over um, and there's no going back. So I think I, I can't in good conscience sign up to a piece of legislation without having um, all the relevant facts in front of me. Meanwhile, it was revealed the Shadow Communications Minister Malcolm Turnbull had a $10 million investment in an IT company that stands to benefit from the NBN, and that provided some sport for Labor in question time. We are calling on the opposition to support this bill. Uh, whilst we call for that support, I note that the member for Wentworth has publicly supported structural separation. I also note that the member for Wentworth now has 10 million reasons to support the NBN as well. 10 million reasons to support the NBN. Now, there's a great Australian saying, put your money where your mouth is. Well, the money's heading towards the NBN of the member for Wentworth. But his mouth's the heading in the, in the opposite. His place. The Simon Banks, why did Labor go so hard on this in question time today? Uh, well, I think, you know, the whole issue about the commerciality of the NBN is a pretty interesting subject matter. I mean, uh, Mike Quigley, for example, has written a letter to members of Parliament basically saying that, uh, you know, when they do receive the business case uh, next month, they're going to see that the NBN is going to make uh, a lot of money for a lot of people across the Australian economy. Uh, the coalition like to think that this is, you know, some kind of boondoggle. It's not. It's uh, it's a, an incredibly important piece of, you know, productive investment in our economy. There are an enormous amount of businesses that are going to make uh, a lot of money off the back of the national broadband network uh, being out there, and the Australian economy as a whole is going to benefit. Uh, so it's an absolutely critical piece of infrastructure, and I think the government's just making that point. Anthony, picking up on a point there that Simon has raised, how much, though, is this a bad look for the government that they haven't released this business plan yet? Plenty of time uh, to do so. Won't this feed a perception that the government here has got something to hide? Yes. I mean, it's so ham-fisted how they're doing this. I mean, obviously, if one's going to invest billions of dollars, release the damn information. Now, obviously, there are commercial and confidence can be a legitimate point of view. No one's doubting that. But the idea, for example, demanding that a member of parliament signs a confidential agreement for seven years, which is now removed to supposedly two weeks, which probably will be removed to nothing <laughs> next week, sort of, I think, shows the level, which I think a lot of people are saying, which is the broader context of how Labor is not delivering here, that the sense of, yes, it's difficult parliament and, yes, they have to negotiate, we understand that, but there is no sense that Gillard and the government has any...